<laughs> Following on from the last video, which I showed this piece, which took me 10 full days to make this, I remember that some um, five years after I made this, this is 2011, I came across a wonderful version made by one of my fellow puzzlists, Marty Reese, who's also a very fine lady origamist. This is her one, which is so much better than mine. And after a bit of negotiation and waiting for a year or two, she made one up to me. But look at it. This is actually not made with big dollar bills. It's made from two one dollar bills for each of the sections. Mine's got three times one dollar bill, that's three dollars. This is six dollars, but my pieces are made about that size and hers are almost twice the length, but very, very finely made. It's got extraordinary way of finishing all the corners as tight as it can be, and I was very familiar with all the corners. So, what well about Marty? Well, interesting enough, the, the packaging, she, she sent it to me or gave it to me and raised as much, as much interest when I showed it to friends as the thing itself. This is quite delicate, so you need to put it in something secure. This, would you believe, is her brilliant idea for putting making a little container for it, which is made from an old fizz pop bottle. You push these pieces in, they've got what they call bi-stable ability. It's stable like that, and it's thick, stable like that. And the, it's a curvature bottle, which makes it behave that funny way. And there it is, beautifully stored in an old recycled Coke bottle. I like that very much. Well done, Martin. Well, now, today I want to have a, just a quick look at the, um, the largest and smallest origami I've ever come across. This is the one I'm going to concentrate on, the bird, to start with. So I had to go at making some small versions of this, and uh, I didn't get that far, but here's the first one. It's a one inch, no, two inch square of paper, and when you do the bird from it, that's the size of bird you get from it. Not bad, but it's a begin. Then I had half the scale again. This is now one inch. It's a bit smaller than that. That's two inches, and that's one inch square. And the bird for that is, yes, it's a bit smaller, but there we are just about there. However, I was given by a friend of mine who came back from Japan a much smaller one still, which he found in the Rita airport, which is coming out. I've put it in amongst the other ones to show the scaling. So at the back here, we've got my two inch square piece of paper. And this is a one inch square. And I don't know what that one there was made from, but it's unbelievably small. I was missing it actually for several weeks and I thought it had flown away. Well, no, it didn't, of course. I was just mislaid it, but I found it again. Now, even this is big because when I looked at a book by Paul Jackson, who I've known for many years, he pointed out that the smallest one is made from a piece of paper which starts at one tenth of an inch. You get an idea of this. This is my starting piece for the larger bird, the two inch paper. But in the corner here, I nicked out a tiny, tiny little, almost invisibly small square. Well, I haven't completely taken it out. And that is a tenth of an inch. I marked it on here. Two inches here. And that tiny little one there was a starting point for this amazing Japanese origami, a paper folder, to make one of these birds. Seriously small, that is. Seriously small. Now we go to the other extreme where I couldn't possibly hold it in my flat, the biggest one, but I've certainly come across it in the, in the, in the, in the uh, lots and lots of websites about origami. And remember that um, for origami, a pure origami, you're supposed to make it from a single piece of paper. No extra, no cups, no nothing. Just folding a single piece of paper. This piece of paper must have been, ooh, half an acre, no, I'm exaggerating, but it's certainly very big. And it shows a full-sized elephant made by this amazing artist. It's just so amazing. And it's sitting there looking absolutely magnificent. I don't know how many hours you spent doing it, but what an extraordinary bit of work. So in my mind, I think that's going to be as the biggest bit of origami ever come across. I have got one confusion in my mind, though, I should mention, and that is going back to this one here. I did see on the internet that the Japanese were very keen on their little bird, got children at some school or possibly pupils at a college to make one of these, which they, according to the uh, bit of news I was reading, had wingspans, a total wingspan of 268 feet, which means about 120 foot for each wing, and then the body bit in the middle. I don't know, I need to follow it up to see how that could possibly be made so huge. But in the meantime, I'll stick with the elephant as my little icon for the largest bit of origami versus the smallest bits of origami. <laughs> what an amazing activity it is. <laughs>